Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In this video I'm going to be teaching you about dishwasher and heating problems. Your dishes may not be coming out of the dishwasher correct. Uh, they may be still covered in grease and grime from uh, the food. Your dishwasher may be starting to build up a grease and grime residue on the side of the machine and things are just not looking like they're coming out clean at all even after putting them through a couple of cycles. The dishwasher may be taking a long time to complete a cycle or it may be coming up with an error code if you have a digital display. If you don't have a digital display and like this machine it just has a light system you may have a sequence of lights flashing or maybe one light is staying on and the dishwasher does not complete the cycle. These are all possibilities that the heating system may be failing or one of the thermostats in the heating system. Now this dishwasher runs on a flow through heater. Uh, a lot of other dishwashers use elements inside the uh, compartment itself which are visible and some have elements built into plastic systems which can be unclipped and tested with separate thermostats and NTC sensors. All models of dishwasher do vary so it's very important to understand what heating system is in your machine before you start any of the work. You can find this by getting your model number and usually the PCN number or serial number to ascertain which heating system you've got. Some of the other tests that can be done to make sure it is something to do with the heating system is I sometimes use a digital display uh, if I'm out on a customer's uh, house or I may use our monitoring system which records what's actually happening with voltage and everything else while the cycle is going through. You can see this in other videos. Uh, basically what I normally do is put the machine onto a hot wash, something around the 65, which would normally take an hour and a half, two hours minimum, but also stick either a thermostat or electronic thermostat into the machine to record the highest temperature the machine gets to. Now, we have an air temperature at the moment at 16 degrees, and the water going into the machine may be 10 degrees. Well, if the water does not heat up during the whole cycle, then you may have a problem with the heating system. Uh, I'll show you how to test the heaters and also on some of these flow through heaters they have the thermostats built in. This means that they can't be changed so you have to replace the whole item. They're not that expensive, they are available at our website and also the NTC sensors are also available and some of the earlier type heating elements um, which are now being replaced mainly by flow through heaters but a lot of commercial machines, for example, may use a standard heater like this or actually in a cylinder. Uh, but we'll go through all the fault, strip down the machine, find out what's gone open circuit and then replace the component. Right, we've had the dishwasher on now for about 35 minutes or so. Uh, we should be in a heat sequence because I know the uh, cycle on this machine but you want to record this all the way through the wash program. Uh, as you can see at the moment we have still a temperature which is slightly above air temperature of 17.4 and on my voltage meter I can see that the appliance is still only drawing 0.46 of an amp which is the circulation motor working. If the heating system was on, i uh, give you an example, if it was using a 2000 uh, watt element in the heating system, I would expect to see an ampage of about 9 amps, and within 5 or 10 minutes uh, of it being on a heat cycle, we should have been up to 25, 30 degrees minimum. So I'm pretty sure that this machine is not heating. Now, as I said, Predominantly the main fault with these are the heating elements or the thermostats. Other faults that can occur, you may have broken wiring inside the door area because the door opens and shuts many thousands of times while you're using it and sometimes you can get metal fatigue in the wiring. Other faults are the relays can go open circuit on the main control board. There's a relay on the control board, you can find out about relays in our other videos on the website. If, for example, the uh, relay on the circuit board went open circuit, 
uh, this would not allow voltage down to the heating element and this can also be a common fault but you can see all about relays and other faults with these dishwashers at the website so let's start taking the machine apart turn it off and drain the machine down then we've got to take the lid off the machine the side panel uh, and tilt the machine over and remove the plinth and also the underside of the machine to get access through to the flow heater this process will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and sometimes you're able to access the machine straight away from underneath other machines you have to remove both side panels and the lid and sometimes you have to drop the whole base off so it's not really that easy job on some machines but on other machines they have made it reasonably simple now lids normally are very basic there is usually two screws at the top on some other machines you may have catches and sometimes you may either have screws at the front or catches as well slide the lid backwards up and the lid will come away. Next we're going to undo both side panels. Remember when taking these apart always make sure you keep the screws separately because some of the screws are designed to go in black, others are designed to go in steel. Next we'll turn the machine back round to the front. Now on some dishwashers you have to open the door to get access to the screws underneath. There's two screws on this one. Once you've got the two screws out, shut the door. Sometimes it will come away if you slide the machine forward and the plinth can come off. Now we'll turn the machine over onto its back. What we're going to do now is remove the two forward legs. These don't normally come off but on this machine they do. Uh, they're normally attached to the base. But we'll remove these two legs, the forward plinth underneath the main plinth and then we'll tilt the machine back up to remove the side panel. the panel can come away and you can remove the forward uh, the base panel I'm going to lift the machine back up now there's two screws on this model at the top that hold the side panel in place moving them open the door and the panel comes away. Exactly the same process for the other side. Now we have clear access to the whole machine. And now I'll quickly talk you through all the components, but first I'll turn the machine back over. Okay, bottom of the dishwasher, quickly talk you through the components. Main motor, this is the distribution motor. The empty pump, this is the empty pump. We also have a sensor on the side of the well. This is what's reading the temperature on this model. We have a flow switch, which basically is a safety device. If the machine ever filled up in the base of the machine, which is this part here, if water actually got into here, this float would go up and this would stop the machine from working. And this basically clips in and can come away. Now down here, is the heating element and this is the one I'm talking to you about it's quite difficult to do it just from the bottom this is why I've removed the side panel so we can get access in this way as well but we're going to have to undo this clip this clip and the clip on the other side and disconnect the wiring now if you're very careful at this point you'll be able to get at the clip 
which holds the heating element in place. I might have to use a pair of pliers to remove the electrical harness. And that's the plug for the heating element. Sometimes these can burn and the contacts burn. And now using the multimeter I should be able to go across the two terminals to ascertain if I have a circuit. Now if you do have a circuit, remember on this model there is two thermostats. So going across the two we've got no continuity at all. This tells me that one of the thermostats has gone open circuit. Right, I've just put one of the spare heaters here just to show you. Now, this is one side of the element, this is the other side, but both terminals pass through two cut-out thermostats. And if I go across the two terminals on the connection plate, you can see I have continuity. Now if I change this to ohms, now when you go to the website I have done some detailed information for you there, but basically on this element we have a Holmes reading of 29.6.8, sorry, it will fluctuate with my fingers slightly. This is meaning it's about a 2000 watt element, somewhere in that range. I'd have to look at Ohm's law to actually work out at 240 volt what the Ohm's resistance is. That will then give me the what the wattage should be for the element. But you can find out all about this at the website. So a couple of quick checks you can do by connecting one of the terminals on the heater and then going across to the other side we know that this thermostat is good and doing it on the other side try and keep my fingers out of the way now if one of those were open that would tell us that one of these thermostats were open circuit now these are not replaceable in it's too fidgety to actually try and get new thermostats in there you're better off replacing the whole heating element with the thermostats but basically that's a simple test for understanding how the heating element works. Okay, now we know the heater is faulty, I'll quickly show you how to remove it. I'm just going to cut this clip off. It'll give me a little bit of space. I can pull that round. Now, you will need some uh, grips of some type to get onto these clips are going to be awkward when in situ and do watch your fingers on the edges now we can remove this base pipe there's a jubilee clip on that one and we've got a clip on this side and these clips working on dishwashers are difficult sometimes to get at. So I'm using hook nose, pin nose pliers to get this one off. And that's all done. And there's a rubber grommet holding it in place there. And now we've got to get the pipe off on the other side. So we've got to get our hands on the element to hold the pipe on the other side give it a twist and it should pull out now we can remove the whole heater and take off the earth tag and there's our faulty component sometimes written on the components themselves are either part numbers uh, this isn't actually got any part numbers as such, it's only got a manufacturing number, but it does clearly state 2000 watts. Um, so if you do have trouble with your uh, model number or anything else, you may be able to work it out that way. Um, but as I said, one of these thermostats is open circuit or the heating element itself is open circuit. Uh, and this is a clear sign that uh, the test we did on the two terminals, this part needs replacing. So we'll just take the other hose off, press down the clip, and that comes away. 
So I've got another heater here in my uh, box of spares so I don't need to put a new one on but if you're replacing a new one exactly the same process. So we'll put the hose on and then we'll get the clip and we need to line this up so it's all going to sit in place. So that will be roughly the position we want. And we can just press the clip down. These can be replaced with Jubilee clips. I'm going to drop that on there. That's done. Now we can slide the heater in. I'll put the wiring on last. And this is the location lug I was on about. So first thing I'm going to do is get it in the tube on the other side. Oops, sorry I can't give you good video of this because it's trying to get my hands in that while the camera's filming but that's in location now we'll put the clip back on here and that goes on to the main motor and I'm going to do that up straight away so it holds it in place Make sure these all go on correctly. Now we've got the base pipe. So I'm just going to press that clip down, slide that on, and this pipe has got a location lug on it. So that's in place, that's in place, and we've just got to get this hose on nice and tidy that's in situ using our pipe grips clamp clips now once you've got all the clips on we can replace the electrics excuse my head getting in the way but that sits in, make sure the plug goes in all the way. And if you need be, just use a screwdriver to push it down so it's good connection. Then we need to put the earth tag back on. Now it's very important on this model of machine that you make sure these hoses are all fitting correctly and not twisted because this would restrict the flow of water going through the element. Uh, I'm not happy with this top clip so I'm just going to move that slightly and that's nice and all in situ. We'll drop the float container back on, make sure that's working. Now I'll put the machine on test now with the sides actually off and that way we can check for leaks and everything else. Right, we've got everything ready. I'm just putting a piece of wood where the legs used to be to get the machine reasonably level. And now we can connect it up to the power. Now we've put the temperature gauge on. We've slept it to cycle D, which is a 50 degree wash. It's just started filling uh, and washing. And we're only drawing 0 0.46 amps at the moment. Uh, the temperature is 17.4 so we'll give it a few minutes, uh, 20 minutes or so and it should actually at some point in that period cut into the heating cycle. And we'll come back this, to this in a second. Okay here we are with the machine after it's been on a while. As you can see our temperature now has gone up to 30 degrees and we're actually drawing 9.02 amp. That means the heater is actually running at the moment. The temperature will increase to rise as the heater heats up the water. And this should come up to somewhere close to 50 degrees or just over 50 degrees. Because remember, we're only using an air temperature, so it's only water splashing over the sensor. It's not immersed in the water. But as you can see, the temperature is already climbing. 32.3, 32.4, 32.5. So the heating system is all working perfectly. All you have to do now is reverse the process to put the machine back together after you've done a cycle. As I said, 
do make sure you check the hoses for any leaks before putting the machine together because you do not want that float switch activating and causing you problems. I hope you found this video helpful. Please remember to buy all the parts off us as that's what keeps us going and able to make these videos for you. And if you did find this video uh, very helpful, you can always support the website by clicking on the Buy Paul Beer page and donate to the website. Uh, it always makes a difference to help us produce better videos for you. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. Do remember to shop with us. If you have any questions, feel free to use the contact us page and fill it all out correctly with model number and serial number and we'll do our best to answer any questions that you have. Thanks very much indeed for watching.